Well, you know, when you buy a piece of software, generally, um, you, you, the software will, will install all sorts of changes in your computer and it'll make registry changes and, and, uh, and so on, uh, which is why when you um, uh, want, decide you want to stop using the software, generally speaking, you'll use an uninstall program that comes with it. And the idea there is that you've removed all of the changes and the settings uh, that the software uh, has introduced to, in, in your computer. Uh, now, it struck us here at Apparently KM for some time now that uh, knowledge management initiatives really could do with something quite similar, an uninstall knowledge management program, which would take away all of those nasty changes that have been put into the culture and the process and the policies of the organization in order to implement KM, so that things can go back to where they were before. And nobody really seems to have thought about this. If, if, if an organization decides that it doesn't want to do KM anymore, there isn't a program to help it uninstall all of those nasty features. Um, so that's what we've been working on here at Apparently KM for the last few months. And we've come up with a, a program. Um, uh, organizations quite often don't want to admit that they're, they've made a mistake or that they don't like doing knowledge management, so they want to do this um, um, discreetly. So we've come up with a program that we actually call a KM Strategic Repositioning Program, uh, which does effectively that. We call it KM STREP for short. Now, um, within a KM STREP program, there are four potential, potentially different strategies that you might want to deploy, depending on how far knowledge management has actually gone in your organization. Um, for example, uh, the first strategy uh, is to deal with a knowledge management system, a, a technical system, a sharing platform, document management system, that sort of thing. Um, now, we found that quite, quite oddly, that of all of the KM uh, interventions that you want to uninstall, uh, the implementation of a large and expensive knowledge management system uh, is actually the cheapest and the easiest uh, to uninstall through our STREP program. Uh, and we found this out quite by accident, working with a client one day, uh, we discovered that their knowledge management system, when it had been installed six months before, the software vendors had actually forgotten to install the database. Uh, which meant that people were very happily uploading documents and so on. And when they went looking for documents, they couldn't find them again. But since this is fairly typical in knowledge management implementations, everybody thought that this was fairly normal. Um, so there you had a, a case where a knowledge management system uh, is in existence and uh, uh, ostensibly being used uh, for, for six months, and everybody's pretending that it's completely fine, and there's no database with documents inside. Um, so th th this was the inspiration for our first... KM strep program uh, strategy, which is simply to delete your databases in your KM system. Um, people will pretend that it's still there um, because they will, uh, they, they're, they're actually still using all of their old systems behind the scenes, you know, their shared network drives, their Lotus Notes and so on. Um, they'll pretend to be uploading their documents into the KM system, um, but all of the normal work goes on behind the scenes um, and everybody's fine. Everybody's just going to pretend that everything's okay. Uh, so that's actually the easiest uh, uh, intervention to, to uninstall. Um, the second one is a little bit trickier, which is where an organization has conducted an, uh, a KM strategy and roadmap exercise. So there they have this document, this thing that they have to keep um, running programs, uh, uh, they have to keep checking the progress against it and so on. It's all been, you know, put in people's faces and it's a big program and everybody's aware of it and uh, very inconvenient just to, just to ignore it uh, all of a sudden. Um, so what we recommend in this case um, is to employ a second set of consultants who must be different from the first set of consultants who helps you do your first KM strategy roadmap. And your second set of consultants, uh, really their task is to review, conduct a review view of your uh, initial KM strategy and roadmap. And provided that they are a different consulting firm, um, they will come up with completely different recommendations. Um, otherwise, how can they justify their employment by you? Um, uh, and, uh, and generally what happens by the time that they've uh, you know, talked to everybody and interviewed everybody and done all of the focus groups and so on for the second time round, you'll find that people in the organization are pretty much, much tired of doing KM. And they've got absolutely no interest in checking up on progress on the KM strategy review. So you can just let, let everything just dissolve and fade away. Um, 
Our third um, strategy is, 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 is a little more tricky again, and this is where um, knowledge sharing has become endemic in the organization. Uh, so there's been a lot of effort on knowledge sharing, collaboration, you may have communities of practice, um, and people have got into the habit of sharing, um, uh, especially across departmental boundaries and so on, which is most inconvenient and very difficult to dislodge. Um, now we found actually that there is, actu there is a, a very simple approach um, to this, which is to uh, commission um, a review of information security across the organization. Just they basically call it an information security audit. Um, and again, uh, we at Apparently KM uh, uh, do this uh, quite frequently, particularly if, if we're trying to uninstall um, a knowledge sharing culture. Um, and basically what you do in an information security review is you go through the organization, you collect stories and examples of risks associated with sharing um, knowledge and information um, in a non-controlled way. Um, and the exercise itself makes people really aware of, of, of the risks of sharing knowledge. Um, and the report, um, uh, we normally recommend in the report that an information sharing, a knowledge sharing policy be written um, and that the, this policy begins with the, uh, with the exhortation that um, knowledge sharing is, is, is an important thing to do but uh, must not be done or must be done extremely cautiously in the following circumstances. And then you have a whole long list of, of uh, situations in which knowledge and information sharing is going to be risky. Uh, and we find that this is really, really, really good at uh, making people stop and think before they share. And once they've stopped and thought, uh, in 80% in of cases, um, they'll, they'll hesitate and they won't do it. And the whole knowledge sharing thing um, just goes down from there.